Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to take you through the beginnings of the next phase of my 3D printed robot arm project, interfacing it with my brain via the MindFlex headset. Hey guys, welcome back. For anyone new to the channel, my name's Eric. Glad you could join me today. Uh, if you guys could do me a favor and if you're new to the channel or haven't posted before, please leave a comment down in the bottom how you came about uh, finding my videos. I've noticed uh, since the Google Plus migration, there's definitely some uh, increased uh, views and some new subscribers. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm really hoping to uh, give back to YouTube all uh, some of the things that it has given to me. Through all the, the content provided by people like you, I'm able to build things like this. I, I learned very well from, from videos. Um, it just seems to work for me. And there, there's a wealth of information out there, and I just tend to assemble bits and pieces from all over. But Anyway, uh, if you're new here, thanks for joining. Today we're going to go through the beginnings of the interface between the MindFlex headset and my 3D printed in-move robotic arm. Uh, I'll s point this out, disclaimer, don't assemble your arm like this, I've got the wrist on the wrong side here. Um, hopefully nobody's assembling theirs the wrong way. This should be over, the only reason I haven't changed it yet is because I already have the tendons done. It's very difficult for me to retension those at this time. My tear down will fix that. Anyway, let's get started. So what I've decided to do, uh, actually first off, if you haven't seen this before, this is my hacked MindFlex headset. I'll post a link up here to the playlist on how I hacked this and how to get the data out to the PC and work with it on the Arduino. Also, if you're new here and haven't seen this before, the entire InMove robotic arm project has been documented via, I believe I'm up to, I think, eight videos on that. I'm going to treat these ones as separate from both projects, and this will just be the interfacing. And I'll put a link to the InMove arm videos right there. Anyway, let's continue. So what I have here is the Arduino Uno. This is not the one hooked to the robot over there. We're going to use a completely separate interface to test this, uh, to test well, the interface between the two. I'm going to use a separate UNO board in the meantime and a separate single servo. This servo is going to mimic what the servos in the robot arm will do. I'm doing this just to make sure I don't completely mess up the code or do anything foolish that uh, might harm the arm and uh, I can get the same results from this and then when we're done we'll just simply plug in the robot hand to this UNO board or move the code over to the other board. Anyway, let's get it set up on the on the computer and see what we've got. So what I've set up here, I've got the servo plugged into one of the channels that the, um, the InMove arm will run from. What I did is I cloned the InMove movement program sketch for the Arduino that I used in the last Imove video that uh, opened closed and pointed and pinched and all that good stuff. Uh, except I'm just hooking up to one single channel and running it to the servo right now. Then also I imported all the brain mapping uh, graphing sketch that I used before. The Arduino, the uh, MindFlex is hooked into the Arduino here the Arduino also sends the data out via serial to the computer so I can display it at the same time. What we should see is uh, we should s I'm using this value here and we should see some reaction here on the servo so I'm just going to reposition the camera. Okay here's a little reposition. I should mention that this is an experiment by the way. Um, you're seeing it live as I'm trying it and we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. So I verified the sketch does work. What should happen is anytime this bar goes over the 40% mark, we should get movement in the servo. And then when it falls below it, we should see the servo back off. Okay, with, uh, with a little luck, what I did is I, I changed the servo threshold value to 50%. And we should see this move. Hmm. 
as is the nature of experimenting, it is failing to move anytime the camera is on. That's bizarre. It was working while I had it paused a moment ago. Let's have another look, see what's going on. All right, let's try this again. Apparently I had a bad connection on the Arduino board. This should work when we get over about halfway on the bar. We should see reaction in the servo, and then when we drop back, we're already actually over the threshold. So, hmm. Okay, let's try this again. I have no idea how I'm going to edit this video, but I guess we'll find out. I found an error in the code, so now we should see at threshold, no matter what happens, the servo should change change state from the direction it's in now is the at rest once we get over the 50% mark. If I can hopefully get my brain to, to work and get moving here, we should be able to get it, there we go, over the 50%. And as we uh, come back down, if I stop talking, there we go, back under, perfect. We have proven we can control things now. Uh, repeatability, well, that's to be determined. But uh, the code works. Um, I can use any of the values or any combination thereof. Uh, tasty tidbit, the MindFlex headset uses this value here, the, uh, the attention value. The meditation value should be relatively inverse to that. These are both internally calculated in the headset. There's not a lot of details on the algorithms that they use. It's proprietary. But as a general rule, you'll see one go high and the other go down. If I stop talking and relax and stop thinking, we'll see the meditation value go up. Again, there's really no rhyme or reason to it at times. Uh, but it is seemingly repeatable and controllable. You can check out my other videos uh, when I tested this thing um, just to just to view the reaction of the bars. We can also use the delta, theta, low alpha, high alpha, low beta, high beta, low gamma, and high gamma. And those are supposedly fairly accurate. I am not a neurologist, so I, I know the, the cliff notes of what each range is kind of anticipated to mean but it's not perfect but if we can do mental math or think about something really hard and force this past a threshold or use a combination thereof of these first two which was good enough to put a Mattel game out onto market that seems very repeatable I see no reason we can't control the robot that way um, Long-term vision, hopefully we can use this as, uh, I'm going to release it open source, all of the items already are, uh, I, there's no special snowflake here, this, uh, I took the Hack MindFlex uh, from online sources, the InMove is entirely open source and by Guy L, fantastic project, I just combined the two, and we'll see if we can make it work for um, perhaps uh, brain uh, rehabilitation from brain injury or a prosthetic limb, uh, fully 3D printable. Hey, why not? Let's see how far we can push this. Anyway, I'm going to work with the code a little bit more and do some more testing here and uh, I'll update you in the next video. Thanks for watching.